Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see you. It's really nice to be here in the house of the Lord. And I want to thank everybody for helping me uh, as I go about my, my school of ministry, my three-year program. And um, I want to give a big thanks. That was, uh, it was a blessing that this church gave to me. A true blessing. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's up in... Uh, the facility is up in Groton, Massachusetts, that's northwest of Boston, and we meet, um, I think it's two or three times per season, and we're going to meet, so in the fall we'll meet three times, in per, two or three times in person, and uh, in the summer we have Zoom, so we meet, uh, we have reading, and uh, it's a very thorough uh, program. And, I'm just so grateful, very grateful, um, that this church is helping out. Thank you very much. Thank you. When Anne was, um, my, my message today is uh, connecting with Jesus. And Anne, when she wrote our, when she spoke about our, uh, a responsive reading she read twice make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace she read that twice and that really is the, that really is my my message so Anne read that twice and when she read it twice it was just a confirmation to me that through thick and thin, we really make an effort to keep the unity of peace. And that has to do with overlooking our brothers and sisters' faults and hoping that they will overlook ours. Amen. So, that got me very emotional that the church has helped me with uh, my, my school. So I just want you to know that it was great. And we gave um, thanks to Matthew Kent. And um, I was down and out with a broken car. It was late. I was kind of staying in the barn. <laughs> I was on the far side of the state. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to call him. It's late. I'm going to yeah, he's laughing. Hey, I'll come pick you up. It's cross state. And he's laughing the whole time. You know, I'm dreading to call him. And sure enough, I didn't have to sleep in the barn. It was, it was cold that night. You know, he picked me up. And I was ready, John. When you showed up the next morning, we were ready to go. And that was through Matt. I, I gave him a call. My car was down, and I also want to give thanks. And I do want to double my efforts with this church. I do. I want to double my efforts. You hear all that the good that these people do. <coughs> Joe offered his truck. It was amazing. I needed it. But then I thought, oh, and I wanted to, I, Joe, I wanted to take it, I, I wanted to take you up on that offer. But then I was like, oh my gosh, it's not where to happen with Joe's truck. Then I've got like, you know, I'm getting it from all angles and I didn't want, so I'd rather, you know, grin and bear what I had to bear before I, you know, uh, inconvenience anybody else, you know. But I was grateful. It meant the world to me that you even said that. It really did. My sister offered her car as well. But I didn't want to, you know, and the same thing, I didn't want to inconvenience anybody else. Please turn with me to page um, 1475, and we are going to start with connecting with Jesus, and what we're going to do is um, we are going to do an analysis of how other people connected with Jesus so that we can have in our mind an idea to strengthen us when we want to connect with Jesus. Okay? Other people have done it. They've connected with Jesus. 
And so we're going to do an analysis of how they did it. And the story starts off. Now Jesus was out and he has just come from casting out demons from a man called Legion. That's where he's, and he's in his disciples are coming into the town and they're greeted by this man. And it says, we're on verse 40. And uh, that's chapter 8, the book of Luke, verse 40. Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. Okay? So here is Jesus coming with his men, with his disciples. This gentleman, who is the leader of a synagogue, says it right there. He fell at Jesus' feet. Okay? So he's on the road, and this man falls across his feet, stopping him. He stops Jesus. And now he's pleading, pleading with Jesus to come and visit his daughter and heal his daughter. Okay? So Jesus, and I'm certain that Jesus saw the compassion of this man and was touched by this man. And now Jesus agrees to go to this house. If the crowd is packing around Jesus, and now they're going to go, Jesus is going to go to this house to visit this very sick girl. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She had an illness for 12 years and could not be healed. But she knew in her mind, this woman knew in her mind that if she just touched Jesus, she would get her healed. That's what the woman knew in her mind. So she had to go. It says in the book, that there was a big crowd around Jesus. Mm -hmm. So she didn't get intimidated. She had to get, she had to go into that crowd. She had a focus if I only touch. She didn't have to grab his arm. She didn't have to hug him. If I only touch just his cloth. Just his cloth. She had an, the understanding of who she was dealing with. Jesus. The Messiah. The Savior of the world. If I can just touch Him. She came up behind Him and touched the edge of His cloak. And immediately her bleeding stopped. Now, can you imagine? This crowd, is ha this is all happening. And Jesus stops. And he says, who touched me? Just like that, who touched me? When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. Now think, I want you to think and, and go deep in your mind. He's getting pushed by the crowd, but he was touched by somebody. He could be getting touched by all sorts of people, but not deeply touched. This woman deeply touched Jesus because he's getting all pushed around, but this woman drew something out of him. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, Oh, okay. When they, when they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know 
that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, isn't that a daughter? That's, that's something that you might overlook. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. It was her faith in Jesus. She had the understanding. She had the understanding that Jesus can do it. Jesus can do it. He can help you overcome your obstacles. He can help you overcome your illness. He can do it. But you have to create the... You have to create the situation that the faith can flow. If she had stayed in the house and not gone out on the street to meet Jesus, this wouldn't have happened. She could have thought in her mind's eye, I have been to all the different healers for 12 years and, not, and it's not helped. This guy surely isn't going to help me. But that's not what she thought. She thought if I just touch him, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And she focused the focus and got in through the whole crowd and she got her healing. She was made whole. And that's when she says, daughter, your faith, your faith, your faith has healed you. Now, he just heals, he just heals this woman. And, but he's on this mission to go to this daughter's house. And they come out. And they, the, the people that come out of the house come out with a negative, a negative response. The girl's dead. Don't even bother. That's the next line. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. When you read the scriptures, there is a lot there's a lot in there if you look at what these people are thinking. Right? Here comes Christ. Jesus can do it. He can do it. And this gentleman comes out and says, you can't do it. That's what he's saying. You can't do it. She's dead. If she will go on, hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid. <coughs> Just believe, and she will be healed. Okay? When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. They're wailing and mourning for her. Watch this. They're wailing and mourning for her. It's a time of mourning, right? Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead, but asleep. So with Christ, I'm confident to say that death is just sleep to Jesus. She's not dead. She's just sleeping. And they go from wailing, right, to laughing at him. They laughed at him knowing that she was dead. They're laughing at Christ. That's so insulting. This gem, this Jesus is coming to this house to heal this woman, and they're laughing at him to scorn. He's coming to help. He just healed the woman on the street. He just healed this man that no one could take. And yet, they're going to laugh at him to scorn. That happens with us when at, with at, making the connection with Jesus. 
Jesus can do it. Jesus can help us. But he took her, they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead, but he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned, and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told him to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Now, I want to get back to um, Jairus, the father, right? Who prostrated himself, stopping Jesus. He went out and acted. He went out and stopped Jesus. Now, the message is connecting with Jesus, right? Connecting. We want to connect with Jesus. He acted. He didn't stay at home. The woman that touched Jesus, she acted. She didn't stay at home. She went out and was proactive. Was proactive for Christ. And by being proactive, for, by being proactive, you have the ability to stop Christ and to focus on your situation. Because we need Jesus. We need Jesus in our life. We need Jesus to send us the Holy Spirit. And just like if you start a car, right? The car is connected to the battery, and you have a positive and a negative. But if you take that negative off, that electricity doesn't go. When we are grounded, that negative is a ground. When we are grounded in love and compassion, the Holy Spirit can work through us and will work through us. When you are grounded in compassion, the Holy Spirit can work through you and you have the ability, like we talked about, to overcome things in peace. To overcome things in peace. It's not easy to do. You have to be grounded in love. I and confident that Jesus acted for Jairus because of his compassion for his daughter. And, she, and that woman, she had the understanding, both of those people had the understanding that Jesus can and is willing to help us. He can do it. He can. He can help you and he will help you overcome the obstacles in your life in your family life, in your business, in your ministry, in the church. But we have to play a part. And all this stuff, you will see that it, Jesus ends it by saying, it was your faith that made you well, that healed you. It was your faith. So, that's Luke. Now let's go to... Um, Let's go to Luke chapter 18, and that's on page 1495, same chapter. This is making a connection, making a connection with Jesus. Now, Jesus' mission is... Jesus' mission, why he was here with his disciples, is to save mankind. He is on a mission. He is going to offer himself up on the cross for the salvation of the world. Jesus is, that's Jesus' mission. It says, a blind beggar receives his sight. And the other Gospels will tell you that the name of this, his name is Bartimaeus. This is verse 35. It says, As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. I'm going to read that again. 
As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. Don't mistake at all this blind man. He is extremely astute. He is an extremely astute person. He's by the side of the road begging. What is he doing? He's begging. He's doing what he can do to be able to survive. He's on the side of the road. The woman was on the road. Jairus was on the road. They're not sequestered in their prayer closets. Your prayer closet has a, has a very, very valuable uh, part of our lives. That's where you get to go spend time on your knees, repent of what you have to repent, and listen to what God has to say for your life. But making a connection with Jesus, these people are making a connection with Jesus out on the street. When he heard the crowd going by, right? He couldn't see, but he could hear. And he used his ears when he heard the crowd. And so what did he do? Did he, what did he do? He, um, he asked what was happening. See, he's an astute person. He asked what was happening. What's going on? Right? What's going on? They told him Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Now he knows, just like Jairus, that we just, and just like the woman, he knows what Jesus is capable of doing. He knows it. He knows it. He knows it. He knows it. He knows it in his mind. He knows what Jesus is capable of doing. So he is like, today I can get. I can get my healing. I can get healed. This is Jesus of Nazareth. This is the Messiah. This is the Word of God that made everything that is. So he, that he calls out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And that, and that, and that by him saying that, he is saying that this is the Messiah. Son of mercy, he understands about the covenant. He understands who Jesus is. He has it. He, he knows who he is. So those who led the way, just like when, so you're making your connection. When you're making a connection with Christ, it doesn't mean that there aren't going to be things that break that connection, right? It says. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Those are the lead, those are leading the way. Those are the leaders. What if he had said, oh, they know, they know what they're talking about. I'm just going to sit here and let Jesus of Nazareth and his crew go by because the leaders have told me to be quiet. Right? That's what they're telling me to do. But what does he do? He doubles his efforts. He yells out even the louder. Have you ever been told to be quiet and been like, no, I'm not. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to double my efforts. You may not want to hear me, but I know somebody else who does. Have you, have you ever been, have you known in your heart of hearts that you're on the path, on God's path, and you've been, you've been silenced just like him. But if you want that blessing, if you want that healing, you have to double your efforts. So he cries, he cries out even the louder. Those who, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And bam, there it is. Jesus stopped. He stopped it. Right? Now he focuses on, now, he, now the Lord has focused on Bartimaeus. And he ordered he ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What? This is, I, listen to this sentence. And don't think that Christ isn't going to ask this of you. What do you want me to do for you? Right? 
And Bartimaeus, he knows what Christ can do. And that's why he says, Lord, I want to see. He, that's what he re, Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, receive your sight, your faith, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God when all the people saw it, they also praised God. And that's how Bartimaeus got his healing. He doubled his efforts. He yelled out, the more. But he was on the street. He was out there. He was proactive. He was pro very proactive. He was an astute person. He was a thinker. He thought. He thought. I can't. He couldn't, like the woman. The woman could muscle in and get in. Get, get that caught, but he couldn't. He was blind. He couldn't. He, he could only hear. So what did he do? He used what was available. He used his voice. And when he used his voice, they tried. The leaders tried to silence him. They put the kibosh on him. But he doubled his efforts, and that stopped Christ. That's making that connection. You may get stopped, but you still double your efforts. So now we're going to go into Zacchaeus the tax Zacchaeus the tax collector. I'm in, just in chapter 19. So Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was chief tax collector and was wealthy. We have at opposite ends of the spectrum. Bartimaeus was a beggar. Zacchaeus was a rich tax collector hated by the people, despised by the people. He wanted to see who Jesus was. He wanted to make that connection. He wanted to see who Jesus, he wanted to make a connection with Jesus. But because he was short, he was short, he could not, again, he could not see over the, over the crowd. Is it? In each of these examples that I'm giving you, there's a crowd that the people have to get over to make that connection. This is a short guy. There's a big crowd around Jesus. And he, there's no way for him to get to Jesus. So what does he do? He thinks. He thinks. He uses what God has given him. He uses his mind. And he says, well, the crowd is going that direction. And there are some sycamore trees in that direction. So if I run and climb up a sycamore tree, I will be able to see Jesus. Right? And that's what he does. Action. He pro-action. Connecting with Jesus requires us to be proactive. He runs. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore, a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. Have you not ever heard the expression, we have the expression, going out on a limb to get the fruit? Going out on a limb to get the fruit. This guy, when he was not playing around, he may look like it. He's climbing up a tree, right? That's what we did as kids. Climbing up a tree. He wasn't playing around. He was, he was going to make that connection. He was going to make that connection. And that is the same with us. There are times when we, if we want to make that connection with Christ, we have to climb a tree. Metaphorically speaking, we may have to do something that may look make us look childish or foolish. But it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Because if you want to get your, your blessing, you want to make that connection, that's what you got to do. If he had said, I am too short, that crowd, there's no way up. There's no way. And if I get up that tree, you know. I, don't, I haven't even climbed a tree since I was a kid. None of this would happen. 
When Jesus reached the spot, but he did, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came. So listen to this. It says, come down immediately. Immediately. And so he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. And I can just imagine what that man must have thought. Like, oh man, Jesus is staying at my house. You know? Jesus, we have presidents, right? We have presidents from other nations come. We give them the best accommodations. When the, I'm talking the best accommodations. Here is Jesus going to come to Zacchaeus' house and think about what the folks are saying. This, he, that's a, that, he's, he's getting the honor. All the people saw this and began, naturally, right away, all the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to the guest of a sinner. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, these are, he's thinking, he's thinking, oh my gosh, the, he's really going to come to my house. The Lord of Lords is coming to my house. This guy, I'm not, he's not even, I'm not even worthy. I'm, I mean, he knows who he is. And he knows that Jesus knows who he is too. And he knows that he's not worthy. He's not worthy for Jesus that threshold. So he says to him, he's thinking, he's a thinking man. Lord, Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. He's a rich man. I give half of my possessions to the poor. Jesus didn't even ask that of him. And if I have cheated anybody of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. It's amazing. It's amazing. In that space and time, Zacchaeus reflected on who he was and who was coming to his house. So when you are praying, remember who it is that you're praying to. Remember that Jesus can do it. But we, we can stop it, can stop the blessings, can stop the unity by our own shallowness, by our own pettiness, by and so be, remain humble. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man, that's Jesus, came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came to seek, right there, for the Son of Man, Jesus, came to seek and save the lost. We are Jesus' disciples. We are doing our best to be Jesus' disciples. And so we too are to seek and save the lost. And by bringing those and teaching them, teaching others about Jesus. And that way, by doing so, we build our church. We build this church, this church right here. We build it on Jesus, on Jesus. Jesus is our stone. Jesus is the stone that we build up this church on. And Jesus has come to seek and save the lost. Zacchaeus was a lost man. Zacchaeus knew he was a lost man. And he changed his ways. The people that do not have Jesus in their life are lost. They're lost people. They do not have Christ in their life. By teaching about Jesus and by demonstrating unity and making that connection and allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through us, we are able to build this church, this community, and our nation and build the kingdom of God right here. But it all happens by following the teachings of Jesus. 
and making that connection. Making that connection. And that connection is based on compassion and humility. Thank you.